Get in on the fun with the Shoop Shoop Hula Hoop. The hoop with the sound. Remember when the car hop was the place for good burgers and shakes? Well, the good old days are back. From mod fashion to classic TV shows, the 60s were a decade of innovation revolution and endless grooves. Today, we're taking a groovy trip down memory lane to relive the thrills and joys of the swinging 60s. So join us as we explore the 20 things of the 1960s that kids today no longer do. It's the Shoop Shoop Hula Hoop. Hear that Shoop Shoop sound? It's an inside the hoop sound. Number one, playing with hula hoops. The hula hoop, a cherished emblem of our carefree days in the 60s. The sheer delight of those colorful plastic circles summoning kids to spin and twirl in the warm sunshine of youth. Do you remember the thrill of the challenge? How you eagerly gathered in the streets, backyards, and playgrounds armed with your trusty hula hoop. With determined eyes and a playful grin, you'd set them spinning, hips swaying to the rhythm of laughter and joy. There was an art to it. You see a delicate balance of motion and control. You'd practice for hours, perfecting your technique feeling the gentle whoosh of air as the hoop circled you in a charming dance. And the friendship it brought. Friends gathered in circles, cheering each other on as we attempted daring tricks and spins. There was a sense of unity in those moments, as if spinning a hoop could bind us together in a tapestry of shared memories and dreams. Even now, the memory of those carefree days brings a wistful smile to your lips, just like the memory of car hop rides to restaurants. Remember when the car hop was the place for good burgers and shakes? Well, the good old days are back on Broad Street in Manchester, the king of the car hop. Number two, going to drive-in restaurants with car hops. Do you recall those balmy summer evenings when the sun dipped low on the horizon and we'd pile into the family car, eagerly anticipating a night out at the drive-in? The excitement as we pulled into the parking lot, greeted by the sight of neon signs aglow and the promise of delicious fare served right to our car window. And there they were, the iconic car hops, beacons of hospitality on roller skates, gliding effortlessly between the rows of parked vehicles, trays balanced with steaming burgers, crispy fries, and frosty milkshakes. As dust settled in, we'd adjust our car speakers, roll down the windows, and settle in for a night of cinematic delights on the big screen. With burgers in hand and the aroma of grilled goodness filling the air, we'd lose ourselves in the magic of the movies, surrounded by family and friends under the starry sky. Though the drive-ins may have faded into the annals of history, the memories they left behind continue to warm our hearts. Do you remember your first model car? Number three, building model airplanes and cars. The enchanting world of model airplanes and cars, a cherished pastime that transported us back to the 60s, where imagination soared as high as the skies and dreams raced as fast as the wind. Opening that box, filled with countless pieces waiting to be assembled into a masterpiece of engineering and art, was thrilling. With eager hands and determined hearts, we'd carefully glue together wings and fuselages, wheels and chassis, each piece a puzzle to be solved, each step a triumph of skill and patience. Hours would pass in a blissful haze as we hunched over our workbenches, lost in the complex dance of creation. With every delicate brushstroke and precise alignment, we breathed life into our models, transforming humble plastic and metal into gleaming marvels of craftsmanship. But it wasn't just about the finished product, the journey, the bonds forged in the shared pursuit of a common passion, but there was something more exciting for boys and girls alike. Yeah, your fun time starts with that you sketch. A line appears magically, shaking upside down. It's gone, you'll see. Oh, hi, oh, etch a sketch. Number four, playing with etch a sketch drawing toys. The etch a sketch was a marvel of simplicity and endless creativity that captivated our imaginations in the vibrant era of the 60s. The magic of those red knobs beckoned us to trace lines and curves across the gray screen as if painting with a stroke of a finger. In the quiet moments of our youth, we'd sit cross-legged on the floor, the Etch-A-Sketch cradled in our hands like a treasure waiting to be discovered. With a twist here and a turn there, we'd bring to life complex worlds and fantastical scenes, 
our fingers dancing across the knobs with the finesse of artists lost in the flow of inspiration. There was a certain satisfaction in the simplicity of it all. No paint, no brushes, just a canvas of gray awaiting our touch. With every twist of the knobs, we'd watch and wonder as our creations emerged, lines forming and fading like whispers in the wind, ephemeral yet eternal in their beauty, and the joy of sharing our masterpieces with friends and family. Now let's talk about TV adventures. There is a Santa Claus, isn't there? Of course there is. I hope he brings me a new Marie Antoinette doll for my guillotine. <sighs> Number five, watching epic TV shows. The golden age of television in the 60s, where every screen flicker promised enchantment and intrigue. With a bowl of popcorn in hand, the family huddled close, gathering around the glowing box and eagerly awaiting the start of their favorite shows. With a haunting narration drawing us in, the Twilight Zone took us away to realms of mystery and imagination where ordinary lives collided with the extraordinary, leaving us spellbound with every twist and turn of fate. And then there was The Andy Griffith Show, a comforting slice of Americana that warmed our hearts with its gentle humor and timeless wisdom. From the annex of Sheriff Andy and his bumbling deputy, Barney Fife, to the wise counsel of Aunt B and the mischievous charm of Opie, each episode was a delightful journey back to a simpler time where life moved at a slower pace and kindness reigned supreme. Though the years may have passed and the shows may have faded into reruns, the memories of those evenings spent in front of the television remained etched in hearts like scenes from a beloved movie. Then there was the fun of making specially made ice cream. Number six, using manual crank ice cream makers. During the summer days of the 60s, nothing could beat the merry hum of an old-fashioned hand-cranked ice cream maker. Families would come together, prepared with cream, sugar, and vanilla, all set for a frosty escapade. With eager hands, we'd mix the ingredients and start cranking, feeling excitement grow with every spin. And the joy when we finally lifted the lid. Out came freshly made ice cream, a delightful reward for our efforts, enjoyed together in the sunshine. These precious memories, shared with our nearest and dearest, continue to warm our hearts. Wait, anyone still got a slinky? Who walks the stair without a care and shoots so high in the sky? Bounce up and down just like a clown, everyone knows it's slinky. Number seven, playing with slinkies. The slinky, a cherished emblem of our 60s childhoods. We'd twist and turn its metal coils with eager hands, marveling at its amazing movement and stretchy flexibility. But the real thrill came when we introduced it to the stairs, watching with bated breath as it tumbled down, bouncing and flipping with a life of its own. The clinking sound it made as it descended was music to our ears, a symphony of childhood wonder. Even now, the memory of those slinky-filled days brings a nostalgic smile to our faces, a reminder of the simple joys that shaped our youth. Now let's recall a risky and thrilling adventure. Number eight, riding in station wagons without seat belts or car seats. The memories of riding in station wagons during the 60s where seat belts and car seats were but distant concepts. Picture the scene, families packed into those spacious cars, children bouncing around in the back, free as birds, windows down, wind in our hair, we'd watch the world whiz by as we embarked on our adventures. The back seat became our playground, a realm of imagination and laughter. We'd sprawl out on the bench seats, playing games, sharing stories, and occasionally squabbling over space. Sure, it was a different time when safety regulations were more lax, but the sense of freedom we felt. With no restraints holding us back, every journey was an opportunity for excitement and exploration. Looking back, it seems like a simpler time when the open road stretched before us, promising endless possibilities. And what did we do for the love of baseball? Number nine, collecting and trading baseball cards. The timeless joy of collecting and trading baseball cards is a cherished pastime from the 60s. Recall swapping cards with friends, eyes sparkling with excitement as we unveiled each new addition to our prize collections. Those afternoons spent poring over cards marveling at the stats and stories of our favorite players are etched in our memories like the crack of a bat on a summer's day. 
With each finger, we'd carefully arrange our cards and binders and shoeboxes, each a treasure to be cherished. And the thrill of a successful trade, negotiating with friends, swapping duplicates for coveted cards, and expanding our collections with each transaction brought a sense of friendship and adventure to our youthful days. As we flipped through our collections, we weren't just holding pieces of cardboard. We were carrying fragments of history, snapshots of a bygone era when baseball was more than just a game. It was a passion that united us all. Hey, where are those young soldiers? Number 10, playing with toy cap guns. The thrilling days of our 60s childhoods, when toy cap guns were the key to unlocking our imaginations. Do you remember the frenzy of strapping on a holster, donning a cowboy hat, and venturing into the wild frontier of our backyard? With trusty cap guns, we transformed into daring cowboys, defending the homestead from imaginary outlaws or galloping across the prairie in search of adventure. Each bang of the cap gun was a declaration of bravery, each duel a test of skill and honor. And when we tired of cowboy annex, we'd swap our hats for helmets and become soldiers defending our fortresses from unseen enemies or staging epic battles across the backyard battlefield. The pop, pop, pop of the cap guns echoed through the air, filling us with excitement and purpose. In those moments, we weren't just playing. We were living out grand adventures fueled by our imaginations and boundless enthusiasm. And as evening fell, we turned to the radio for another round of adventure. In 1921, radio fans were all earphones listening to a pioneer station, WHN. Number 11, listening to radio serials. In our 60s days, radio serials transported us to thrilling adventures and gripping mysteries. The crackle and hiss of the radio set the stage for excitement. We eagerly anticipated turning in to hear the Lone Ranger or Dragnet. We'd gather around the radio, eager to be transported to the Wild West with the Lone Ranger, or join Sergeant Joe Friday on the hunt for justice. These tales weren't just stories, journeys that sparked our imaginations and kept us on the edge of our seats. With bated breath, we'd gather around the radio, eager to be swept away by the drama and suspense unfolding before our ears. The heroic deeds of the Lone Ranger and his trusty sidekick Tonto, or the relentless pursuit of justice by Sergeant Joe Friday and Dragnet, held us captive igniting our imaginations with tales of courage and determination. Though the era of radio serials may have faded into history, the magic they conjured lives on in the hearts and minds of those who grew up in the 60s, a nostalgic reminder of a time when imagination was the most significant special effect. Now, there was a special kind of adventure. Lots of things seem to be getting squeezed in this tight economy, but the latest victim seems to be comic strips getting cut out of the newspaper. Yeah, some cartoonists feel the comics are in crisis. Number 12, reading comic strips in newspapers. In the 60s, flipping open the morning newspaper meant stepping into a world of colorful adventures. Comic strips adorned the pages, bringing laughter and delight to our breakfast tables. With eager eyes, we followed the escapades of beloved characters like Charlie Brown and Garfield. Whether shared with family over breakfast or traded with friends at school, these comic strips were more than just ink on paper. They were cherished treasures that added a touch of whimsy to our 60s upbringing. Up next is something that today's kids will find hard to believe. Number 13, going to school on Saturdays. The bittersweet memories of our 60s childhoods when the school week didn't always end on Friday. Saturdays meant trading in our playtime for a few more hours of learning, a notion that seemed daunting at first, but became a routine part of our weekends. Waking up to the sun filtering through the curtains, we'd reluctantly trade our pajamas for school clothes, knowing that a day of lessons lay ahead. Yet, despite the initial reluctance, Saturdays at school were not without their perks. We'd dive into subjects we enjoyed, participate in fun activities, and sometimes even enjoy a special treat from the teacher. As the day drew to a close, we'd head home with a sense of accomplishment, knowing that we had made the most of our extra day of learning. During those days, we also had fun in the kitchen. Easy bake, easy bake, fast as you can. Mix them up, mix them up, pour them in the pan. Slide them in, slide them in, let them bake now. Slide them in, slide them out, easy bake, wow! Number 14, playing with easy bake ovens. The cherished memories of our 60s childhoods 
where the kitchen was a place of wonder thanks to Easy Bake Ovens. Recall the excitement of unpacking those tiny ovens, their vibrant colors promising delightful treats. We'd mix the batter or dough with eager hands, following simple instructions. Then, filled with anticipation, we'd watch our creations bake to perfection under the warm glow of a light bulb. As we waited, the kitchen filled with the sweet scent of fresh baking, igniting our imagination. When our treats were ready, we proudly shared them with loved ones, reveling in our culinary success. These moments weren't just playtime, they taught us skills and sparked creativity. The memories of Easy Bake Oven Adventures remain cherished, reminding us of the joy and magic of baking in our 60s upbringing. Let's recall now some bubblegum fun. This is a chunk of super soft bubble yum bubble gum. This is a loud thumping tube pumping boom box. Both are known for blast. Number 15, collecting and trading bubble gum cards. Remember the treasured hobby of collecting and trading bubble gum cards? There was the excitement of opening a fresh pack, the scent of bubble gum wafting as we eagerly sorted through the colorful cards. With hopeful anticipation, we hunted for favorite players trading duplicates with friends to complete sets. Those afternoons spent swapping cards were filled with joy and excitement as we shared the joy of building collections and discovering new treasures. Though years have passed, the memories of those bubblegum card adventures remain as sweet as the gum itself, a nostalgic reminder of the simple joys of our 60s upbringing. But there was something more thrilling. G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe, fighting man from head to toe, on the land, on the sea, in the air. Number 16, playing with toy soldiers and plastic army men. In the swinging 60s, nothing was quite like the thrill of playing with plastic toy soldiers. We embarked on epic adventures with each miniature soldier across the living room floor, battling imaginary foes and crafting stories of bravery and triumph. Those little green warriors were our steadfast companions, their chipped paint and worn edges bearing witness to countless battles won and lost. From daring rescues to strategic maneuvers, our imagination knew no bounds as we orchestrated epic conflicts that lasted for hours. And though the sun may have set on those carefree days, the memories of our childhood adventures with those plastic soldiers remain etched in our hearts a nostalgic reminder of the innocence and joy of days gone by. Not to be forgotten is the groove we had in school. Number 17, participating in sock hops and dances. In the groovy days of the 60s, there was nothing like a school sock hop thrill. The gymnasium transformed into a whirlwind of music, laughter, and dancing you'd eagerly swap your school shoes for bobby socks and slip into our most fabulous outfits ready to hit the dance floor. The jukebox blared out the latest tunes as kids jitterbugged and twisted the night away. There was an electric atmosphere with friends laughing and spinning around in a haze of teenage energy. It was a chance to socialize, make memories, and even steal a shy glance at a crush. As the evening faded into the night, we'd reluctantly bid farewell to another unforgettable sock hop, the echoes of laughter and music lingering in our hearts until the next time. Those were the days, my friends, when every sock hop felt like the best night of our lives. The next memory is sure to take you to space. He never heard of it. Now he runs to breakfast because he had to have his tank. Number 18, drinking Tang, the orange flavored drink. In those days, there was nothing quite like the tangy sweetness of Tang, that powdered orange flavored drink that whisked us away on a cosmic adventure with every glass. Inspired by the space program and the race to the stars, Tang became an emblem of futuristic coolness, transporting us to distant galaxies with its zesty flavor and vibrant orange hue. It was the drink of astronauts and the taste of exploration. For us, it was a ticket to outer space right in our kitchens. We'd mix up a pitcher of Tang, watching with wide-eyed wonder as the powder dissolved into a fizzy concoction of pure delight. We'd imagine ourselves hurtling through the cosmos with each sip, our imaginations soaring to the stars and beyond. So here's to Tang, the taste of nostalgia and the flavor of a generation that dared to reach for the stars. In those days, 
We just couldn't wait for Saturday mornings. Oh, the KPI is my little buckaroo. While the light of western skies is shining down on you. Number 19, watching Saturday morning cartoons on television. In the good old days, Saturday mornings were a magical time. We'd roll out of bed, still in our PJs, and rush to the TV like a treasure chest waiting to be opened. Cartoons! That's what awaited us. With a bowl of cereal in hand, we'd plop in front of the screen, eyes wide with excitement. Every cartoon, a ticket to a world of fun and adventure, from Bugs Bunny's antics to Superman's heroic feats. The house would laugh as we watched our favorite characters outsmart villains and save the day. It was a time of pure joy and innocent delight when the world's worries faded for a few precious hours. And when the last cartoon ended, we'd reluctantly peel ourselves away from the TV, already dreaming of next Saturday morning's adventures. Super Mr. Potato Head, you can make a Mr. Potato Head. There are hats and a hose and pants for you to make a Potato Head Fireman too. And number 20, playing with Mr. Potato Head toys. The whimsical charm of Mr. Potato Head toys in the groovy 60s. Back then, these playful companions brought endless joy to our childhood days. Imagine it, a real potato as the canvas for our creativity, adorned with plastic features like goofy eyes, a big smile, and wacky accessories. With a bit of imagination and giggles, we transformed ordinary spuds into fantastical characters. There was something magical about Mr. Potato Head's mix and match possibilities. We'd spend hours experimenting with different combinations, creating unique potato personas with each new assembly. Mr. Potato Head evolved as the years passed, but the memories of those simple pleasures remained. For those who grew up in the 60s, these quirky toys were more than just playthings. They were cherished companions that sparked our creativity and filled our days with laughter and joy.